why are all MacBooks just so sad? Because they have a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's old bald dad here and great to be with you we're here for testing tuesday on testing tuesday we take a list or a quiz and we put it to the test to see if it's actually real or if they're just blowing smoke on this testing tuesday we're going to be looking at another list as we're getting closer to christmas another list we're going to be looking at it's called 18 presents all 90s kids definitely beg their parents for. So we're going to go through the list. I'm not going to do all 18. I'm going to be choosing 10 from the list. But remember, it says all 90 kids definitely beg their parents for. So we're going to be looking at, since they use words like definitely and all, if we go through this list, if you're a 90s kid and ask yourself, did you beg for this? And if you didn't, well, then the list is bogus. Most likely, I'm going to go with it and say that most of this list is probably bogus simply because items tend to be gender specific. What I mean by that is sometimes boys want one prize, sometimes girls want a different one, and sometimes they want the same ones. So let's get on in. Let's look at 10 items according to that list that we definitely begged our parents for. The first on the list here is... American Girl Doll. An American Girl Doll. What? Okay, first of all, no. I never asked my parents for a doll. So that fails right there. As I said, gender specific. But second of all, take a look at this doll. What has it got? Like two little buck teeth. How, how old is this doll? Like, I, I raised kids. And, and, and when kids have that kind of teeth, that's usually their teeth are just coming in. But the hair is much older. No child that that's young has that kind of hair but uh, when I just look at that it's like a creepy looking doll I'm sorry I I'm not talking about the dress I'm talking about just the face just the way she's staring I, I, I would not want that in my room I'm sorry uh, not only did I not beg my parents for it I do not want that doll in my room I'd be like a do like a Chucky kind of thing coming at me with a butcher knife eh, eh. I know it's a little more psycho but that's kind of looks like no I did not ask for that doll for Christmas not at all well, let's go. And that one's kind of gender specific. I, obviously, no. How this? Uh, it's called a, a Now That's What I Call Music CD. Now, truthfully, I have no idea what that is. I know what a CD is. CDs are still in effect. CDs were in my time. In fact, cassettes were my time. No, I'm not old enough for an 8-track. If you're old enough for an 8-track, you're even older than I am. You're really old. Just saying. I never asked for one of these. Did not ask for a now that's what I call music, but I gotta admit, there are times I asked for CDs that were compilations of the year's music, because it was a great thing. See, we didn't have iTunes, we didn't have YouTube the way you guys do and is available now, so if we wanted to listen to the top hits, we either had to tape it off the radio, which was kind of tricky, or you got the top hits CD. That's what you did. You got the top hit CD, and that's what you went for. Great music, because that's all you want to listen to. Nobody wants to buy a CD of like 15 to 20 songs that only has like three you want to listen to. So you'd buy a Now That's What I Call It music, or you'd buy one of those top CDs, like top country hits of the of the year, or, or something like that, top rock hits, or whatever. They existed, they're still great, and that's how you got your music. So yeah, kind of ask for that one. Number three, The Sims. And has the People Simulator from the creator of SimCity. Now, if you don't know what The Sims are, The Sims are a computer game series. They're up to, like, The Sims 4. And if you really want to know what The Sims is like, it's for people who are bored with life and they want to live a different life. And I mean that literally. Because you, you start a Sim, you create a Sim, and almost everybody created them how they looked or how they wish they looked. Then your sim had to get a job, because you had to pay bills, because you had to eat, you had to learn how to cook so you don't burn down your kitchen, uh, you had to make friends, you had to make a family, it, yeah, it's, it's life, as if, if your real life wasn't bad enough trying to get a job, trying to get bills, pay your bills, trying to prepare food and decide what you, you wanted to eat, you could play a game about it, yeah, okay, I admit, 
I own The Sims, The Sims 1, and I owned all the expansion packs to it as well. <laughs> Truthfully, the expansion packs I got from somebody else. But I had them all, and I gotta admit, because of my children, I enjoy it. I also own copies of The Sims 4. Not all the expansion packs. I got it on sale when it was incredibly cheap. But, yeah, okay. The Sims had trying to live life, having fun. But truthfully, with my kids, they want to see if they can burn down the house. Uh, they like to see if they can, uh, how long they can go without their Sims sleeping. That kind of thing. It was, a, it was kind of a fun game. Next up, a Tamaguchi Digital Pet. And truthfully, that's uh, when raising a real pet isn't hard enough, let's go digital. And that's quite literally what it was. You raise this pet. Now, the different things about it. They kind of made up a backstory that they're from an alien planet and came to Earth. And that's how they kind of lived and, and that kind of thing. But truthfully, one of the true facts about this, what's really funny, uh, is the creators, which a male and female designer and creator... They won what's called the uh, IG Nobel Prize. Not to be confused with the Nobel Peace Prize or anything like that. It's a satirical uh, prize. Kind of like the Razzies. And they won an award for the Tamaguchi uh, for diverting millions of person hours of work into the husbandry of virtual pets. And, and, and that's literal. That's an actual thing. You can look that up. They won an award, a Razzie award for kind of thing, for diverting people to look after these dumb pets. Because they could only live for like 25 days, I think, right around that. And you had to feed it, you had to play with it, uh, and all of this stuff. And you had to train it. And it went from a, a, a baby to its teen years to an adult. And depending on how you raised how it turned out. Yeah, a lot of fun. You probably waste a ton of time on these things. And they make a comeback, just so you know. All right, a, a baby G watch. Okay, uh, outside of it being pink, kind of a cool looking watch. Gotta give it that. I don't wear watches. My wrists are a little too small and I don't like them. They feel big on my wrist and yeah, don't like them. But I definitely, I did not own one of these. I don't know, did you own one of these? If you were a 90s kid, did you own one of these? If you're not a 90s kid, would you own one of these? Just wondering. I just wanted, but no, I, I never asked my parents for one of these. Next up, inflatable furniture. Okay, I'm just wondering, who who had the idea? They probably sitting around a, a room one time, you know, and they saw balloons. They're like, how cool would it be to sit on a balloon? How cool would it be? Or maybe they're thinking they were just in the pool one day. And it's like, ah, inflatable furniture. We can sit on that in the pool. But you, they advertise these for your room. These seem, there's one of these items that I think it seems like a great idea. You know, inflatable furniture, great, yeah. But right off, I think you'd sit in it for about a minute, and you're like, this was not all it's cracked up to be. The only thing inflatable furniture does, really, you really want to know what it does? It, it tells you you packed on a few extra pounds. There's nothing more embarrassing than getting to sit down on an inflatable piece of furniture, and you're going right to the floor. Yeah. Never owned one of these, never asked for one of these. Yeah, I, I can see kind of the novelty. Hey, I got inflatable furniture, but pfft, get a hole and pfft, it's done. Or you just get a big guy like me, sit on that. I'm not that big, but sit on it and pfft, pop. And there it goes. Yeah, no, I'm not asked for inflatable furniture. Oh, classic is up next. It is the Furby. A Furby. Now, if you've never heard of one of these Furbies, uh, <laughs> they were just a toy that you could interact with. Uh, it, it could. It started speaking gibberish, like yeah, 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 yeah. and then it would learn languages from you. It could learn, pick up spill, uh, pick up uh, language skills from you. You could put two Furbies together, and, and they would start talking and interacting. Uh, it, look, that's what the black thing is. There, it's not. Those aren't uh, eyebrows. It's actually like a sensor, and the tongue was a sensor. You could feed the thing. Uh, they were addictive. They really were. They, they were fun for a while, and they were addictive for a while. They kind of went out of phase. Uh, although, true story, old bald dad had a girlfriend in high school. She had one of these. And when he would go to visit, she would hide it so he wouldn't play with it. I got to admit, I never owned one. Kind of wish I did. Furbies were great, kind of fun to play with. Now I take an exception to this one. Nintendo games and simple games. What do they got there anyway? 
I don't think we've got any really good games. This Spy vs. Spy. Uh, Tecmo, NBA Basketball, Lunar Pool. Eh, 720, it must be... What is, I don't know. They, they got some games there. Yeah, Nintendo games. Oh, yeah. I, I Not only did I ask for Nintendo games at Christmas, I asked for the Nintendo. Got my very first Nintendo back in 1988. Still play it, obviously. Uh, and I'm still playing Nintendo games. Check out on Thursday's edition with Old Ball Dad, ret uh, Throwback Thursdays. We play retro games. We've got some up there. Give them a try. See if you like them. That happens comes out on Thursday. But Nintendo games, great games. Nothing beats the classics. Most of the time. Some of them are pretty bad. No denying that. Here's one for you. Light Bright. Light Bright. The whole idea of Light Bright is you had this black screen. You had these little pegs. You'd stick them in. And when it turned on, it lit up this beautiful picture. Supposedly. Uh, if you follow the design, great. If you didn't, well, you end up with lots of things. Now, these these end up with lots of problems. Those little pegs were always getting lost. They would be everywhere if you accidentally kicked it over. You spend all your time picking these up. But still, light bright, I think we need more light brights than anything else. We need more light brights. I think we need more kids playing with light brights, building up their creativity, uh, and just getting them interested in it. I think Light Bright should make a comeback. If you disagree, well, you're wrong. You're wrong. Light Brights should definitely make a comeback. Uh, another one. Bop It. Bop it. Uh, the object of Bop It was really you, it gave out commands and you obeyed it. Uh, twist, knob, uh, bopping it, that kind of thing. See, back before we had all these things like cell phones everywhere, everyone's playing games on the tablets, playing games all the time. Look. Old Ball Daddy enjoys the games on the tablets too. I play some of the classic games on it. I play like Sellers of Catan on it. I enjoy it. But before then, we had to work on real hand-eye coordination. The original part, one of the original party games, Bop It. You listen to the instructions, you gotta pay it, you gotta do it. And I think more kids need this. I think Bop It needs to be come back. Because I think one of the things that a lot of people need to learn how to do is to listen. And Bop It gives instructions. And you turn it, you, you twist it, you knob it, you hit it. You got to listen to it and do what it says. Bop it was great. That's what we need. We need more bop it's, less iPads. That's my opinion. That's the way it should be. All right. Well, that was 10 Christmas presents that you, if you were 90s kids, you definitely begged your parents for. Yeah, uh, honestly, sorry. I did not beg my parents for a lot of those. I didn't even own a lot of those. I own Nintendos. Uh, I own games, so I gotta say, if there's one thing as a 90s kid that I begged my parents for, it was games. Sorry, just the way it is. Nintendo games, uh, Super Nintendo, whenever that come out, oh yeah, I begged for those. What gifts did you beg your parents for to buy you for Christmas? Let me know in the comments, hit me up there. If you like this content, why not always hit a like, and why not subscribe to the channel? Get at least three videos out a week. Each for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, different types. Check them on out. This is Old Bald Dad signing off. Have a great day.